thought the ice sheets were simply too big and too dense to be an immediate risk. But the latest evidence is making them think again. The first wake-up call came from the West Antarctic Peninsula. In the summer of 2002, a NASA satellite photographed a slab of ice the size of Luxembourg, called Larsen B, as it sheared off the ice shelf. Other collapses followed, turning the assumption that it would take thousands of years for the big ice sheets to melt on its head. The ice sheets surprised us. We sort of thought that the little glaciers would melt when it got warmer and that the big ice sheets wouldn't do much. And all of a sudden, the big ice sheets started rumbling faster and the Larsen B was falling apart. And we said, whoa, that wasn't supposed to happen. On the other side of the globe, Greenland's cache of ice is also showing signs that it's starting to feel the heat. In the last decade, temperatures here have shot up by about three degrees Celsius. NASA satellites are already detecting a meltdown around the edges of the ice sheet. In the heart of Greenland, Baylog and scientists encounter an entirely different realm. A single slab of ice about 2,400 kilometers long and 800 kilometers wide. It's mid-July and the summer melt on the Greenland ice sheet is in full swing. It's sort of like a ice version of Kansas out here. It feels like you're out in the Great Plains and it just happens to be white and there's this vast dome in the sky overhead. It's, it's unbelievable. There's no sound at all. No sound except the wind and the water. It looks quite featureless when you just look horizontally, but as you walk over it and you look down on it, there's, there's a tremendous amount of texture and detail in here. This entire surface is like one gigantic Swiss cheese. During the melt season, the sun's heat transforms the surface of the ice creating a landscape that constantly shifts between solid, liquid, and vapor. The melt water courses through the ice sheet, searching for a path down. Figuring out how this complex plumbing works is essential for predicting the future of the ice sheet. Look at that. Whoa! That is intense. Oh my god. I can see I think maybe 250 feet down into the dark. No sign of the bottom. But this water is just drilling down into the ice sheet. There's this great unknown here. This great mystery of where does all this water go? And what does it do to the flowing and the melting of the ice sheet and sending it out to sea? Nobody really knows. Baylog wants to get a shot that delves deep into the underbelly of the ice. The only way to secure his ropes is to thread them through the ice sheet. Slack. Okay. Wow. Yay. How about that? These giant holes, called moulins, are thought to bore hundreds of meters through the ice to the bedrock, but nobody has ever been down there to find out. Oh, God. That's the first time I've really seen the hole down there. See if 
this whole balcony could go any second. There it goes! It's a strange, evil, gorgeous, horrible, fantastic place. I mean, there's hundreds of years of ice here layered in and we're looking into the cross section of this life history of the glacier. And it's so beautiful, this insane aquamarine and all this scalloping and fluting from the water. What a spot. Baylock is just scratching below the surface of the ice sheet. Below him is nearly a kilometer of solid ice. In these compressed layers of the ice sheet, there are clues to how fast Greenland could melt. At the National Ice Core Lab in Lakewood, Colorado, a giant freezer stores over 13,000 meters of ice drilled from 34 sites around the cryosphere. Dating back hundreds of thousands of years, these ice cores are time capsules that allow scientists like Jim White to peer deep into the history of ice. This piece of ice is interesting because it has a couple of things you can see right away. One is there are bubbles throughout here. These bubbles are little packets of air. It's these bubbles we can take out and measure CO2 and methane and nitrous oxide. It's the only medium that really collects the atmosphere itself. Most importantly, scientists have identified a direct historical link between increases in greenhouse gases, like carbon dioxide, and steep rises in global temperatures. At every peak, big rises in sea level followed, as Greenland's ice sheet shrank. The ice core records also reveal a particularly telling moment in Greenland's history. Roughly 125,000 years ago, temperatures rose by about 4 degrees Celsius. The entire southern portion of the ice sheet melted, and global sea levels rose by over 3 meters. The more recent ice core record shows the potential for a similar meltdown. Right now, greenhouse gas levels in the atmosphere are even higher than they were 125,000 years ago higher than they've ever been in the last half million years. Temperatures are already following suit. The only explanation is the burning of fossil fuels. What we see in this ice core is very solid evidence that what's happening today in the atmosphere is different. It's not uh, a normal part of the climate cycle. It's something caused by human beings. Rising temperatures are once again pushing Greenland towards a major meltdown. But what the ice cores can't tell us is how long it will take. White suspects that the last time Greenland lost a significant portion of its ice, it happened over thousands of years. But this time, it could happen much faster. And here we are now fiddling with the dials of the climate machine, not quite knowing what's going to happen. And we know from these past records that the climate system can come up and bite us hard. So far, global warming is biting hardest at the fringes of Greenland's ice sheet. Ringing the island are hundreds of outlet glaciers that act like pipes, draining the interior ice sheet out to sea through narrow fjords. In the late 1990s, many of these spigots began gushing more ice. 